Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at the new OS X beta uh, for El Capitan. And we're going to take a look at some of the features that are built into the uh, operating system. Uh, in my previous screencast I showed you how to install the beta as a uh, separate partition on your drive so that you can keep all your existing settings intact and didn't have to worry about that messing anything up. So if you haven't done that yet and you'd like to know how to do that, if you just take a look at my channel, uh, you'll see where I showed you how to do that install. And so what I thought we'd do this week is just take a look at some of the system changes that have been added to El Capitan, uh, just to give you an idea of how this works. Now, this particular update is more of a refinement, uh, so there's not going to be a lot of, a ton of brand new features, uh, but there are a lot of tweaks and things uh, in the operating system that really make it, uh, make it nice. So I'm going to go through the system changes in this particular screencast. So one of the system changes is uh, window management, and there's a couple of different ways that uh, things have been changed. Uh, what I'm going to do is let me just open a, a few applications here. I'm just going to open a number of them and just kind of get the, those apps on the screen. Let's open this. Uh, contacts here. Uh, let's open an empty Safari window. And so uh, one of the things we've got, I've got all of these windows open on this screen now. And so if I hit F3 or if I just swipe up with my fingers, I... Uh, move right into um, basically right into Mission Control. And so here in Mission Control, it's a little bit different than it used to be. So now instead of just uh, you know adding desktops and full screens, what I can do is actually drag an application to the top like this. And just by letting it go, it creates a full screen of that application. So that if I move off of this and I swipe to the left, there's my full screen for maps that I just put up there. And I can swipe back. Let me just go back into Mission Control here. Uh, the other thing I can do is if I just come up here, I can also do a split screen view. So let's say I'm working on maps and I want to do some research on Safari. If I just drag this up here, you'll notice I can put it on the right or the left if I want to. And I'm just going to put it on the left. And when I go into this screen, now I've got this split screen view. Uh, I can resize it uh, the direction that I want it to go, You know, if I want more on one side or the other, so I can kind of set it. But uh, it's just a quick way for me to get into uh, looking at two applications at one time and just working with them without distractions. Uh, I can go ahead and remove those by just clicking on uh, this little uh, button here. It'll take it out of that split screen view. Again, if I swipe up with my four fingers, I go back here into uh, Mission Control and there I'm back. So that's kind of a nice feature. I mean, again, I can uh, add more desktops just by clicking like this and getting those desktops on there. I just remove them by clicking this way. Uh, so again, it's just kind of a refinement uh, of the system, and so it really is a nice one there for Mission Control. Okay, another way to, uh, to do split screen uh, would be like this. If I just come back to the desktop here, I've got these two applications. If I just go to the green dot and I hold for a minute, you'll notice that I get this split screen view. And you can see that I can move this wherever I want it. So if I want, let's see, my contacts on the left-hand side, and then maps on, I mean, the right-hand side, maps on the left-hand side, that's another way I can get into full screen view. Now, to get out of this, I can simply just uh, hit Escape uh, on there to get out of it. And now it goes back to where it was, if I want to do it that way. Uh, or I could also do it from the File menu. Uh, but that kind of shows you how that works, how to get out of that. You notice when I escape, Contact still stays as a full screen application. Uh, I can drag it out and just put it back where it was. So as you can see, it's, window management is a little bit easier here uh, with this new update to El Capitan. Another feature uh, that's built into here is if I just uh, wiggle my cursor quickly, it will get big. Now in my recording software, it's not allowing the cursor to get big for me uh, on here, uh, but that is a feature that's been added on there. And so I just want to let you know that's there as well. Uh, so let me just uh, close this down here. Let me just quit Maps and put that down and do the same thing here for Contacts. Now, uh, another of the things that was added uh, in this particular update is there is a Find My Friends uh, widget that you can add. Uh, if I just say here, One New, you notice there's a Find My Friends one that I can add uh, over here. And so if you use Find My Friends at all, let's just say Done. If you use Find My Friends at all, uh, you can sign into iCloud and actually find your friends from your Mac. And so, again, if that's something you use on your iOS devices, it's now also available here uh, on OS X. So, again, a small thing, but it is an addition that was added uh, into that. Now, the other thing that we've got is we do have, um, in terms of the desktop, we've always been able to hide the dock 
uh, before, uh, but we also now have the ability to hide the menu bar at the top. If you just go into System uh, Preferences here, go into General. Uh, in this area, you can either change uh, the menu bar and dock, dock to dark mode, and so if you like the darker, you can do that. Again, you could do that before, but you can make that happen. I'm going to do that for a second just to show you that I can automatically hide and show the menu bar. So if I just click on this, notice the menu bar is gone. I come to the top, it comes down. So very similar to when I'm doing the same thing uh, with the dock. So uh, technically, if I just come down here, I'm going to control click down here, go to dock, uh, turn hiding on. Theoretically, you could have a completely clean desktop until you go down to get the dock or up to get your menu bar. And that adds, uh, adds that functionality in there, which again is kind of nice if you like that cre uh, clean screen look uh, to make that happen. Uh, you'll also notice that the font is a little bit different there. Uh, we got the San Francisco font that has been added. Uh, that's a change. Again, a small one, but it is a change nonetheless. Uh, the other thing is, is, that, um, is that there has also been a change in disk utility. And so let me go ahead and uh, pull up Spotlight for a minute. I'm going to show you how Spotlight works as well. But let me just pull up Disk Utility. And as you can see here, we've got a new and improved Disk Utility. Uh, it looks different. It looks a lot more similar to uh, an iOS layout where now you get an overview of your drive with all of your information there, also showing you uh, what is taking up a lot of the space there on the drive, which is nice. So you can see how much photos is taking up and applications and those sorts of things. Uh, and it gives you kind of an expanded view. Uh, you also notice, if I just come up here, here's my overall drive, and it shows me uh, my two partitions on there. Uh, if I wanted to do a disk first aid, I could hit this, and it will automatically go in and run first aid on the disk and check it out. Uh, or I can go in and partition, and I've got this now... Um, I have this particular sort of visual partitioning tool uh, that allows me to kind of scale it around to partition the disk the way I want to do that. Uh, I can click the plus to add a partition and name it and then apply it. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to do that, but if I just click the plus, you can see I add a new partition and name it and get it all set up and put the right size on there. I'm just going to cancel that because I don't want to do that. Uh, but I have that there. Again, I've got the erase, the mount, and then I've got the info, which tells more uh, detailed information about that particular device. So again, just kind of a streamlined uh, disk utility, uh, which is nice. That can come, It looks a lot better. Uh, it's a little easier uh, to use and, interf and uh, look at because of the interface. Let me just put that down. Okay, another change uh, that's been added uh, to the system here is Spotlight. Spotlight has a few other tweaks and changes to it. So let me just bring up Spotlight here. There's my Spotlight window. Now Spotlight has built in a few more direct searches, things like weather. So if I search for weather in Cupertino, you notice there I've got Cupertino's come up, and so I can see all the weather here and scroll up and down. Again, the window can be resized as well uh, to fit uh, where, however I want it to fit, and so I can do that with Spotlight as well. So let's go ahead and erase this and go back to the beginning. Uh, the other thing I can do is do search for stuff like stocks. Um, so I can say Apple stock quote and put that in there, and I get that information. Or if I just say Apple stock, if I come down here, you can see that I've got... Uh, the Apple stock quote and all that information coming up on the right hand side so that's built in as a widget so let me just get rid of that I can also do sports scores show so I'll do the Chicago Cubs and you can see there's my Chicago Cubs scores and so it's got their schedule coming up and all that kind of information and so that's in there as well and so you can do that kind of search you can also do searches for videos it gives you kind of a nice uh, layout I don't have any videos on my machine but it'll do it on a web search so if I say Yosemite server video and you can see that uh, there's the uh, one of the videos that I've done and it's got the YouTube link and it kind of shows a description and lays out very nicely so there are some nice touches that have been added uh, spotlights also added natural search so I can do things like you know documents I viewed today It'll show documents that came up today, and again, I, I don't have any documents on here, so it's coming up with a lot of um, you know system level files and things like that. But if I had documents on here on this install, it would bring those up in the ones that I viewed today. So it does have natural language. It'll even do things like you know uh, presentations with video in it and things like that that'll allow you to bring that uh, bring that kind of information up. So there have been some nice improvements to Spotlight as well. Uh, one more thing that's also been improved um, that they're working on is the, this idea of rootless uh, for security where you would log in uh, to your machine but not have root access by default. Uh, that's something you could add you know, back in if you wanted to. But again, it's just a security feature that's been set up at the system level uh, to kind of secure the OS.
So that gives you an idea of some of the uh, different system level changes that have been made. Uh, I'll come back and kind of give you an overview of some of the application level changes. But like I said, it's more of a, of a refinement of Yosemite than it is a complete uh, overhaul of the operating system. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.